So let's talk about uh, APA style papers. Uh, sometimes these will be called uh, manuscripts. You'll see them in the form of published articles, um, whatever you call them though. It's, it's just a, basically it's a research report over some study that you've completed. And it has to be an APA style and so we've, we've all experienced the horror that is APA formatting um, and, and I know that it's really frustrating, it's really difficult to get a handle on, but just stick with it. Um, this is really important. So what APA style does is it allows us um, across the field of psychology to be on the same page with our paper formatting so that, um, you know, I'm a person that's particularly concerned with the statistics of a study in less than five seconds I can find where your statistics are describing your study. I know exactly where to find information about your participants. I know exactly where to find information on your methods and then uh, your analyses, your statistics as well. So it does provide a purpose. I know sometimes it feels um, really pointless and, and it's frustrating um, but, but do know that there is an overall purpose. So if your APA manuscript had a shape <clears throat> that shape would be an hourglass. So that's what you see here. So you start with the introduction, you go to the method, the results, and then the discussion. So all of that should be in the shape of an hourglass. So what does that mean, should be in the shape of an hourglass? I don't literally want you to, you know, do weird formatting so that your paper takes the shape of an hourglass. It's kind of a metaphorical thing, right? So. <clears throat> It's very broad at the beginning and the end of the paper. So you start the introduction at a broad level, you end the discussion at a broad level. So really what these broad pieces are trying to do is trying to bring in people, get them interested in your paper, and then you will distill down to the details the, the, uh, the kind of you know, the essential parts of your paper, which are, are really detailed, really specific, and then you'll start to, to fan it back out towards the end. So, you know, why does someone, why should someone care about this? Why should the general public care about this? Why should psychologists in general care about this? Um, <clears throat> but that's what you accomplish with the broadness at the, the beginning and the end. So let's talk about your introduction specifically. So you always want to start with consideration of what journal you'll be publishing in. In this case, you'll just consider that this is uh, for a class paper and that your fellow students will be reading it as well. So given that you have a pretty diverse audience, so some of you have taken quite a few psychology classes, others this is maybe your second class, so you have quite a broad range. So we want to start your paper in some general psychology speak. Um, so, for example, I do research on flashbulb memories. So chances are most of you don't know what that is. Uh, just, you know, you're early in your training, so unless you've, you've happened to take a memory class or uh, if you took an intro class taught by me, I of course would spend a little bit more time on it. But in general, you probably don't know what that is. So if I'm writing a paper intended for, for, for you students as my audience and I start off talking about flashbulb memory and summarizing the previous research, you might be a little bit confused. Um, that kind of approach is better suited for um, a specialized journal. So say I, there was a memory journal, Applied Cognitive Psychology for example, that goes out to cognitive psychologists. That's who's reading the journal. In that kind of situation, I could definitely just start out with a flashbulb memory, uh, you know, just, just jump right into it, no problem, because cognitive psychologists, uh, if they're worth, you know, worth their salt, they'll know what a flashbulb memory is, at least some vague idea. Uh, counseling psychologists, clinical psychologists, they don't work with memory on a daily basis uh, in the way that cognitive psychologists do, so you'll want to start at a more broad level if they're your audience. So I might start with uh, talking about a couple of distinctions about memory and just lay out, you know, uh, so there's autobiographical memory and I'll talk about how autobiographical memory is memory for your own life. And then I could talk about uh, vivid autobiographical memory and then continue on to say that flashbulb memories are uh, the really extreme vivid autobiographical memories. So you have to start on level ground where your audience understands where you're coming from 
and then you take them from there and you get more specific, more specific, more specific until you are at your exact problem, your exact paper topic. And so that will all happen in your introduction. So again, you start the introduction broad, you start to get more detailed, more detailed. As you're getting more detailed, you're establishing the reason for your research. So person A or, you know, this group of researchers thinks this thing, this group of researchers thinks this other thing. I'm proposing some kind of um, in-between scenario and then you'll end the introduction section with your hypothesis. So that's another key piece. Your introduction should always end with your hypothesis. So you're setting up the entire purpose of your paper, the entire reason that you've done your paper, um, and it, it, it just really, it, it should draw people in, it should create a need for the research that you've done, um, and, and really, I mean, you just introduce your problem, start at a broad level, distill it down, distill it down, end with your hypothesis, and then you'll transition into your methods section. So you'll see as you get into the, the methods and the results, these are, are really specific sections of your paper, right? So you're going to talk about the exact scales that you used. In this case, it'll be our class survey, the exact people that you surveyed. It's the, the, the nitty gritty of your study. Same thing with the results. So what were your exact results? And then we start to fan out again, right? So your discussion section should always start with uh, a summary of what you said in your results section. So one thing that people told me as I was going through my, my undergraduate career was if you don't understand the statistics yet, and trust me I didn't, just skip it. You should be able to get the information that's in the results section in the first paragraph of the discussion section. So always start your discussion section with uh, a summary of what you found. So I found that students who commute more than 50 miles to school tend to have worse grades than students that live on campus. Something like that. So a no numbers summary should always start your discussion. Your discussion will also include, uh, let's see, so it'll include any limitations of the study. So um, I'll, I'll just give you a limitation of your study right now. We are using what's called a convenience sample. We're just asking students in the class questions. So that's going to cause problems with generalizability, which we'll talk about later in the course. You can talk about future directions. So, you know, my study provided evidence towards this way of thinking. However, future studies need to examine X, Y, and Z. And so you end on a very, um, uh, basically you're telling other people how to build on what you've done. And then you'll end the discussion fanning out again, making it important for everyone that's reading your paper. So again, depending on the audience, which in this case is your fellow peers, it's me, why is this important to psychology in general? Why is this idea important? Why is it important to education in general, depending on your exact topic? So that's a good uh, kind of, hopefully, overview of this uh, APA-style paper. Um, again, it should be an hourglass form. Start broad, introduce people into new terms, get more specific, more specific, give your methods, results, which should be the most specific part of your paper, the most uh, most detailed, you'll have the most uh, terminology, those kinds of things, and then fan it back out so that everyone can, uh, can leave on the same ground. So now that I've I've given you kind of a bare bones description of this, let me let me give a, a Harry Potter example. So I'm a, a big movie fan, and I think Harry Potter does this um, this hourglass shape fantastically. So when you start a movie like Harry Potter, you really can't just jump into Hogwarts, right? You'll lose your audience. You'd be like, wait a minute, they're out of school, but they're away from their family, and they're all young, and they're doing magic. Like, wh what is going on? The movie doesn't start there, right? It starts in a regular city with, with muggles, right, with humans. We're all humans, so we can relate to that. And then you find out Harry Potter is, you know, he has some special talents. And so that's kind of starting from very broad, getting more specific, more specific, until you're at Hogwarts and you realize, okay, we were in a normal place where we all relate to, but now we're, we're, we're in this uh, fantasy land, this magical school of, well, 
magic and uh, and now you can relate to it so so we we started on level ground and then we jumped into this world that doesn't necessarily exist for us but we can see that it might So from there, uh, so Harry Potter, Potter will uh, battle whatever demons or whatever uh, bad sorcerers he happens to be battling in that movie or in that book. And then at the end, it always ends in the same place, right? And where is that? Well, usually he's back at home with his human family. So again, we see this pattern of starting on level ground, starting on Earth with normal, you know, everyday kind of boring life, you know, nothing special. And then you get more specific, you realize there's magic, you go into Hogwarts, you see all the details of the fights, all of that good stuff. And then you come back out to a level that everyone can relate to, which is our human world. So the Harry Potter films do exactly what you need to do with your papers, like I was saying. Start on level ground, end on level ground. So consider your audience, what do they know about what you're saying? and provide them enough information so that they understand what you're saying, so they understand the problem that you're trying to set up. So hopefully that gives you uh, a, a good sense of, of what this paper will be, kind of the general format and shape. There'll be more details coming down the line, but for now, uh, as you're, you're writing your introduction sections, just remember, broad on the ends, end with your hypothesis, and your introduction should establish a need for your study. If you keep those things in mind, you'll do just fine.